Hey, so today what I wanted to do was give you a little bit of overview on what is Banana Bungee Top and what are we kind of going up against in terms of disease mitigation and how can Korean natural farming help. So first things first, let's jump into what is Banana Bungee Top. So here what we're looking at is some healthy banana trees. So if you look at these, you see that the banana is growing out and the each time it kind of puts out a leaf and it grows and extends up and it's growing and it's nice and healthy these leaves are nice and full all of these trees here are looking really nice you see they're kind of growing out and eventually when they grow out like this they'll grow out very nicely like that and then they'll put out a whole rack of fruit and this one the flower has been cut off the bottom and this one, the flower is still intact. So the banana emerges out of the top, a flower emerges. It eventually uh, lets out these different fruits. And then the banana is, this is again an example of a fairly healthy uh, banana tree when it's not affected by bungee top. So it starts from these keikis, these little small um, shoot uh, clones shoot off the side and it will grow into a full tree. And then when you harvest it, you cut down the whole tree and harvest your ripe bananas. So let's start first by asking, you know, ChatGPT, what is banana bunchy top? But let's spell that right. Bunchy top virus. And just ask it, um, you know, find out what the, what the internet has to say here. So it says banana bunchy top virus is a pathogenic virus that infects banana plants, causing the disease known as banana bunchy top disease. This is one of the most damaging viruses for banana cultivation and has been res responsible for significant economic losses in the banana industry. <clears throat> Here's what you should know about banana bunchy top virus. Symptoms. Number one, the um, banana plant exhibits a range of symptoms including shortened erect leaf petioles and the plant bunchy, uh, uh, giving the plant a bunchy appearance mottled and streaked leaves, marginal hooking of the leaf blade, stunted growth, and reduced fruit yield, and in several cases the plant may not produce any fruit at all. Dot-like streaks along the veins of the leaves. So number two, the transmission of this. The virus is primarily transmitted by a banana aphid, Pena, Pentel, Pentelonia nigronervosa. <coughs> wow. When an aphid feeds on an infected plant and then moves to a healthy plant, it can transmit the virus. Additionally, the use of infected planting material can also spread the virus. And so since all bananas are clones, if one banana is uh, infected, then the other ones are spawning off of that clone. So you're gonna get um, you know, forever infected material, basically. Um, distribution. The banana bunchy top virus is found in many banana growing regions around the world, including parts of Asia, Africa, Australia, and the Pacific Islands, which I live on a Pacific Island, I live on the big island of Hawaii, and that's where uh, we're suffering from banana top, bunchy top here. So number four, management. There is no cure for banana to bunchy top disease. So management primarily involves prevention and containment. Some measures include using virus-free planting material, which um, I guess you can do by cell culture, different, different ways of doing it, but um, they're all clones, so once you have it, you have it. Um, regularly inspecting plants for symptoms and removing and destroying infected plants. So basically ruining your life as a farmer and cutting down everything and just destroying your plant, like something sick, kill it, all right? Like, w would we ever do that with humans? I, I don't know, it doesn't seem like a very good uh, method to me. Um, the next one is managing and controlling aphid populations. That's probably a possibility. And avoiding the movement of potentially infected plant material to uninfected regions. So no mention of Korean natural farming, no mention of treating the, um, the infection itself and in boosting the plant's immune system, no mention of putting better soil microorganisms out there, no mention of, um, you know, any, any sensible from Korean natural farming perspective type of solution. So five, the economic impact. In areas where banana bunchy top is prevalent, it can significantly reduce banana yields, 
leading to economic hardships for farmers and increased banana prices for consumers. So terrible, right? Because as a farmer, your farmer doesn't make money. He's not going to farm and you're going to starve, you know, maybe not on bananas, but this disease happening pretty much, you know, on every plant out there. So um, research. Continuous research is being conducted to find resistant banana varieties to understand the virus better, which could lead to more effective control measures in the future. So again, no, no method, no mention of the microbiome, the, um, you know, uh, they're just saying the banana variety is, is resistant. Like it's like looking for certain humans that are, that are resistant to certain viruses. It's like, what about just improving the, the microbiome of those humans or of that, you know, animal and improving its conditions around it? No, instead you're looking for a completely new like species. What if that species doesn't taste good? You know, we like the bananas we have for the varietal reasons we have them. So no mention of that. There's no research happening on that, but there is now uh, because we're doing it. Um, awareness and early detection are crucial in controlling and managing the spread of banana bunchy top virus. So let, let me just say what solutions are there for um, curing banana bunchy top, I'm gonna spell that right, top virus. And um, I don't think, I mean, it said there weren't, but um, so there's no known, known cure for it, right? Um, once the plant is infected, it remains the source of the virus for the rest of its life. However, several methods can be taken, you know, and this is, again, kind of the, what they mentioned before, early detection and removal. So eliminating your plants, clean planting material. Um, you know, using, controlling the aphid vectors, getting rid of the aphids, barrier plants, quarantine, so not, you know, don't move them around, education and training, research, and tissue culture here. Um, so, um, you know, all this here, you know, basically uh, doesn't seem very hopeful. So I also, um, besides just asking ChatGPT, um, I also did a DuckDuckGo search on this to find out more about Banana Bunchy Top. I returned Wikipedia and then uh, University of Hawaii. Um, and let me just show you um, right here um, what, you know, so here's here's the Wikipedia page here of Banana Bunchy Top. And this is what it looks like here. So you're getting the, um, you know, the leaves getting kind of sick like this, and then it's all bunching. So. Let me go and show you. Here's here's another picture of what you know bunchy top looks like. So let's juxtapose this to a healthy banana tree where it's growing out. It's big. It's it's growing out, and then versus again the bunchy top where it's stunted and all the leaves are bunching up and getting really nasty in there. So that's just to show you. Um, but again, reading the Wikipedia here. Um, you know, it's a plant pathogenic virus of the nano variety known for infecting bananas and other crops. It's aphid transmitted. Um, and so banana bunchy top is a viral disease caused by a single stranded DNA virus called banana bunchy top virus. It was first identified in Fiji in 1879. So this thing is not new. It's been around forever. But only recently is it like sweeping through the Big Island and, and sweeping through all the bananas here and becoming a, quite a problem. Now you may say, well, bananas have been growing for ages in Hawaii, why now? But perhaps that has to do with our soil practices, our fertilization, um, the classic, like we don't care about the soil, we just try to make money by growing bananas and monocropping them. So fixing all that with Korean natural farming, bringing in diverse microorganisms, may be a way to solve this. And that's what I'm, testing and going for so and it says it's spread around the world since then so apparently just popped up in 1879 in fiji and then it spread around the world and we're just destroyed but perhaps we started in 1879 to change our agricultural methods and um i think that you you look into that correlation i'm pretty sure that's happened so um like many viruses banana bunchy top uh was named after the symptom scene where the infected plants are stunty and have bunchy top bunchy top leaves at the top. The disease is transmitted from plant to plant in tropical regions. Um, 
of the world by aphids, banana aphids also feed on heliconia and flowering ginger, um, which are important in factors in control of the disease. There are no resistant varieties. So controlling the spread by vectors of plant material is the only um, uh, plant management method. So there's no you know, resistant varieties like what about building the immune system, building the soil, building the indigenous microorganisms, building a robust microbiome around it. But they're saying, oh, there's no resistant varieties. Well, what, you know, if you look at me as a human, 90% of my DNA is actually microorganism DNA. So why are you trying to change my resistance to something instead of supplementing my microbiome? So just throw that question out there as something that, you know, maybe they should look into this. Um, and we are. Um, symptoms may include spotty and, and spotting any deformed plant appearance. I'm not sure what that means. Um, so all, all babu viruses are aphid transmitted, including banana bunchy top. Um, so, and then um, the symptoms of it. So banana bunchy top affects the banana fruit and foliage. It is caused by a single stranded DNA virus the banana bunchy top virus. Banana bunchy top can infect spire, um, species of the family Mucinea, which includes bananas, uh, plantains, abaca, and more. Never heard of abaca. Um, the aphids feed on heliconia and flowering ginger, which are in the same regions as bananas and must be considered in the management of the disease. It is also best to establish a banana production area where these alternate hosts are not present. So not only kill your bananas, but also kill other plants around you and reduce the diversity. Hmm, that makes sense. Any age plants can be infected by this virus, but some varieties of banana, including Cavendish, are more susceptible to the virus. And this is something I've definitely found. Um, my apple bananas are more susceptible. The rare bananas that I had in the past because they already died from Bunchy Top, super susceptible. And the um, royal apple banana, also known as the Namwa, is way less susceptible to the virus. So there is some in the variety varietal. I'm not going to argue with that. Um, in areas where the virus is less common, the disease is usually spread by planting disease suckers at the beginning of the season, which means the season is starting with a diseased crop. Pathogens caused um, cytopathological effects in the phloem tissue, which is damaging of the host cells caused by the virus. The damage causes many effects to help diagnose the char and characterize the disease. The name of the disease comes from the symptoms, which incur occurs in older plants and in which the new leaves that are produced are narrower than normal and yellow and flat, which causes the bunchy appearance at the top of the tree. If any fruit is produced, which is unusual, it will be deformed. In addition, one of the most distinctive symptoms is Morse code streaking, where the infected cells die and are lighter in color, causing irregular spots and dashes in the leaves that are easier to see when the waxing coated over the petiole is rub rubbed away. So, um, so, and then we'll go read a little bit of this. You know, it's present in, uh, in Hawaii. It's present, right? First found in 1988. Um, um, oh, I guess, yeah, no, okay. Let's see, so it's, it's spreading. Um, it was first observed in Hawaii in 1989 and is now widespread on Oahu, the Kona area, and Kauai. I can I could maybe update this to say it is now all over the Hilo side as well. And it's just, you know, it's everywhere. Um, so the pathogen is not present everywhere bananas is grown. Maybe they have different microbiomes. Maybe they have better soil. Maybe they have better agricultural practices. But it is present in, in areas where the vector is also present. So they're blaming it entirely on the aphids. Um, these aphids are most likely native to Southeast Asia, but, the pre but are present in most areas of the tropics and almost everywhere bananas are grown. So they're trying to blame it on the aphids to say that that's the spread of it, but maybe it has to do with your soil microbiome. Um, banana bunchy top is spread in new areas by poor agricultural practices and it can be transmitted on plant for, um, material from the family Moussier um, and the virus's host, which um, 
you know, yeah, okay. Um, so um, here's a little bit more technical information on the um, how it happens, but let's uh, let's skip that and let's go down here to the management because that's really what we're interested in. Um, there are no resistant varieties of ban bananas against banana bunchy top. The most common method of control is chemical control of the aphid vectors. So spraying poison to kill aphids, which probably also kills all the rest of the bugs. I would just imagine, I don't know. Um, another way to help control the virus is to remove and destroy any infected plants before the virus can spread, which is the practice known as ro roguing. Um, so you're basically going to go out and just, you know, uh, uh, cut a hole in the banana and inject them with Roundup. That's how the university came and treated at my friend's place, and it didn't help. The banana still grew with that stuff. It says quarantines are also important, also implemented to prevent the import of any per, uh, potentially infected material, including one in Hawaii that prevents the movement of anything except fruits from the island of Oahu to any other island. Well, that failed. Um... Since bunchy top is widespread on Oahu, fruit is not often produced on infected plants, but if it is, the fruit will be deformed, which is easily identifiable um, if there is any virus present on in the fruits to comply with quarantine regulations. Since bananas are not the only host, alternate hosts for this virus, and the aphid must also be monitored for disease and sprayed with pesticides to control the aphids more. When planting at the beginning of the season, the seed material or suckers should be attained from bunchy top free areas of the world, which I don't think exists. Um, maybe you can tell me, but, um, or from cultures that are known to, and grown to be and developed to be free of the virus. Currently, there is ongoing research into biopriming or inducing the systemic resistance by using bacteria that live inside the host but do not infect. Okay, so I guess I would be doing something similar to that. So they're saying someone is researching that. Control of banana bunchy top is achieved by killing banana aphids or destroying all the banana trees. First, the aphids should be killed in the infected banana material. Then the plant material should be destroyed to prevent the spread of the virus. Infected banana plants can spread with an insecticide like seven, super toxic. Um, yeah. Oh, it's super toxic to get rid of the aphid population and control the viruses to start the starts the control of the vectors. The agricultural department, however, recently obtained EPA waiver for the pesticide Provado as a means of controlling aphids that spread the disease. So, um, you know, just wild here of doing this. Um, so while banana bunchy top certainly has an impact on the industrial scale banana production, it can also be dis devastating to subsistence farmers and depend on their crop to feed their families and provide income. Small farmers will also often lose the uphill fat battle of fighting against bunchy top in their crop because they're putting Roundup on it, which is only going to make their microbiome worse. Once established, it is very difficult to eradicate and manage the disease because people don't know about Korean natural farming and these other ways of increasing the microbiome. The difficulty of eradicating the per is perpetuated by a number of reasons. First of all, the disease is caused by a vector transmitted virus. And this virus is not completely understood yet, but instead let's just poison it because we don't understand it. Secondly, all the bananas are susceptible to disease and no resistant varieties have been discovered or made commercially available because it's the wrong approach, you should probably fix the microbiome. Lastly, controlling the methods are quite demanding, including chemical treatment of the aphid vectors and removing of inf infected tissue, quarantining plants, and monitoring alternative feeding sites. So there you go, that's the Wikipedia download on it. Um, and then here is the CTAR, the University of Hawaii College of Tropical Ag and Human Resources at the University of Hawaii at Manoa. And this is what they say of it. So again, here's um, looking at more bunchy top infected plants here. And, um, you know, that's what it looks like. Again, this is what a healthy banana tree looks like where it's spreading out and it's, it doesn't have a bunched appearance at the top. And this is what the bunchy top looks like where it's small. And then they also, on this page, um, 
diseased plants should be destroyed properly. So, you know, it's like, oh, my my uh, my cousin has a has a virus. Let's just kill him. You know, like that's that's the approach we take to plants. Is like this most um, like just just kill it. Just you know, go and kill and, and just get rid of it. Destroy, kill. Um, that's that's what we've been doing. So. I just want to look at the symptoms and diagnosis here because they mentioned this Morse code here. So I want to show you a little bit of what the Morse code looks like. So here on um, the Morse code streaking, um, you can see kind of these dots and dashes. And apparently that is because some of the cells are dying as they're going out. Here again, looking at it, um, you know, the a nice banana leaf would just have none of these symptoms where it doesn't have these dots and dashes between them. Here's, here's also the petiole, um, you know, coming out of these parallel streaks coming out of there. So that's that's what the Morse code looks like. Um, and then they also mentioned, um, you know, the leaves bunching. This again, you know, here, what, what they're looking like, where you're, the top, the canopy just bunches up like this and you can't get it to, to come out. And, you know, all these are just severe infections. Um, you also get these um, deformed fruits. So instead of the fruit coming out and looking nice, it's almost looking like a fahey here where it's standing up. But the fruits are really um, short and not nearly as robust and full. And I wish they had more pictures of this, but they don't. Um, and then here's symptoms in older plants, like, you know, bunching up like this. The leaves get really skinny here as well, um, coming up skinny like this. Um, and yeah, bunching. Um, and then um, the last little bit here, um, these J hooks, um, where I guess this is like looking like a J as it's coming out here of understanding these Morse code J hooks of what it what it looks like as, as the, you know, you see this J form coming out on the leaves. Um, and so that's what they're kind of saying, these stiff curled leaves here. Uh, you know, just how the heck can this tree grow and, and get sunlight and produce living? It's just it's just dying this way. So um, here's a little bit about the banana aphids. These are apparently the guys um, spreading these things. So um, this is what they look like when you zoom in on them. Um, so they recommend killing these with seven or something else you know here's here's what the aphids look like but um but in my experience um you know i never see things like this where they're where they're that they're swarming that bad um but apparently these are the vectors of spreading it um and here's a little close-up photo of what these these wingless aphids are so if they're wingless um you know they must walk from place to place i guess here's a a, a, a winged one um it says not all aphids grow wings. Winged banana aphids can carry the virus long distance. So, um, but in my experience here, I want to just tell you one thing I notice is if you take a plant like this, um, where it is, um, this, I'll go back to the symptoms and say a plant like this, where, where it is all bunched up and you cut this down up in this area of the plant, it just smells like rotting, like horse manure, like rotting um, in the whole, like if I cut this tree down right here, you would see that this whole inside column and core is just rotting out. And so the solution, the, the thing that I found that works against this is that if you're able to get lactobacillus up into this area, in addition to improving the microbiome of the whole plant around, if you're able to get lactobacillus into this part of the um, of the banana, it will be able to eat out the um, the rot that's happening. And the plant can actually, even though it's infected, it will grow through. So instead of having to poison the plant and destroy it and kill it, you put the lactobacillus in and it will grow through and return back to where it can push out new leaves and the new leaves come out undeformed, un without that thing, even though they still have this virus, they'll come out symptom free. And then from that, if you do it early enough, your banana plant will recover, will get enough sunlight and then put out good fruits and good, um, good plants. So that's the whole key of what 
what the treatment here that we're doing is we're taking the drone, flying it above, spraying the microorganisms into this canopy in getting it into each one where the where the microbes can land in there start to combat this disease causing rotten uh, thing that's happening and then have the plants recover naturally by fixing their microbiome by fixing their um, their thing so again here's the banana bungee top the mitigation you know in nigeria and um what are these these guys are actually doing some uh, mitigation research here on that website. I'm not going to look at that one though. And then PubMed here talking about it and its eradication in Togo, you know, and so what did they do? They, um, they, what did they do? They infection causing stunting. Oh, here's an interesting fact. The most economically important viral disease infection of which causes severe stunting and production losses of 90 to a hundred percent within two seasons. So if you let this go unmitigated for about two seasons, you will lose all of your banana trees and all of your crops. Um, so it is just tragic on what it does. Um, so severe stunting they had here. Um, let's see. So they were doing a PCR test. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, and then... Oh, what did they do? Um, okay, so they were just identifying this virus, which I think is because of the low immune system. Um, because, you know, I have it every, everywhere on the farm. You'd think it would spread to every plant if it was a virus, but it's not. It's only getting certain areas. Um, okay. It doesn't say how they eliminated it. Hmm. So what did they do? Did they poison them all? I don't know. Um, yeah, I don't know. But anyway, so um, so I wanted to just you know use this here as a. Uh, um, let me just finish this up and say, um, will inoculating bananas with um, beneficial microorganisms. Uh, help to mitigate BBTV. And let's just ask ChatGPT if it thinks this. Um, so as of 2021, there hasn't been any conclusive ed evidence or widespread practice suggesting that inoculating micro or bananas with ben beneficial microbes will mitigate it. Um, so uh the use of beneficial microbes, let's see here, is, you know, it's, it's removing infected plants and killing aphids and clean planting material. The use of beneficial microorganisms such as mycorrhizal fungi or beneficial bacteria has been explored in various crop enhancement to enhance plant health, increasing nutrient uptake and sometimes help in the resistance of certain pests and disease. However, these typically don't extend to viral resi resistance. So... While beneficial microbes can strengthen the plant immune response and overall health, viruses like banana bunchy top operate in a different mechanism than bacterial or fungal pathogens, such as the primary line of defense against banana bunchy top is prevented, preventing its spread by addressing the vector and removing the source of the virus infected plants. I am going to do none of that. I'm going to just strictly aerially spray good beneficial microbes. So I'm going to try and prove all this wrong, see what's up. Um, and it says that that f said the field of plant microbe interaction is rapidly evolving because of place things like the Pircana Foundation and research that we've been doing. And there may and there may be ongoing research or new developments in this area after 2021, of course, because we're doing it now. And it might be worth checking current scientific literature or agricultural research updates for any recent advancements or findings of regarding banana punchy top and beneficial microorganisms. So, yep, we'll be prom promoting some research and getting that out and um, putting that into practice. And so thanks. If um, hopefully from this, you learned a little bit about what banana punchy top is. I know this was kind of a little bit longer, but... Um, you know, just checking out what the resources are, what's out there, what ChatGPT thinks we can do. 
uh, what DuckDuckGo can find for us and these resources. So um, I guess follow us on our progress. I've been trying to document this as best as I can. Uh, I'm not going to do any PCR testing or any genetic testing. But what I am going to do is show, you know, before and after and during um, photos and you yourself will be able to see are we able to limit this Morse code thing? Are we able to get the bananas from bunching into now spreading? Are we able to recover all of this without cutting down the fruits, without spreading poison, um, and doing this with just reinforcing the beneficial microbes? So hope you enjoyed. Thanks for following along, and uh, we'll see you along this journey. Thanks very much. Long live the natural farmer. Aloha.